Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to New Music Finds. So this is where I like to collect together all the different albums and things that I've purchased over the past week and present it to you. And I get it from different places like my local record store, also from online retail like Amazon, eBay, and more. So lots of different cool things, 10 total items here to run through with you for this week. Uh, before we get started though, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, if you turn on notifications, you're gonna stay up to date on really cool episodes, just like this for new music finds where maybe you can get turned on to some cool things. All right, so as we always do, we kick off with brand new releases, and I didn't have high hopes for this one here, but when I got it and listened to it, it blew my mind. What is it? Robin McCauley, Alive, is brand new, actually third studio uh, solo album. Most people think this is the second, but it's actually the third. He had a, a Japanese only released solo album back in the late 90s, and then, um, 2021 was the first one that he did since then, coming out on Frontiers, this one also on Frontiers. Now, the same band that wrote, because uh, Robin McCauley co-writes all of the songs or most of the songs on these, but co-wrote uh, and play on the album is the same band that's on this one here. Now, initially that didn't excite me because I didn't so much care for that album, but this one here, I have to say, really, really good from start to finish. I'm super enjoying it. Uh, if you've ever been a fan of Robin McCauley's voice, if you like Black Swan, I highly recommend checking that out. Totally, totally good. Now here again, it's another one that I wasn't planning on picking up, but I went to my local record store, Sound Exchange, and they had it. I couldn't find very much information online about this thing or be able to listen to anything. So in the end, I went ahead and picked it up because I can do that. Robbie Steinhardt, former Kansas violinist who unfortunately has passed away, made this album here, not in Kansas anymore, and it's uh, sort of subtitled with a Prague opera. Now, the cool thing is, is the same person that worked with John Anderson on his, uh, I think it's called A Thousand Hands uh, album, is the same person that worked on this here. So they were working on it, bringing in some really cool people to help out and stuff. Robbie Steinhardt sings lead on this and sounds really great. Uh, but there's some cool you know, musicians working with them. There's a story throughout this thing. But if you've been missing that definitive Kansas violin playing, it's on here. This is so good. I definitely recommend this. I've not been able to stream it or anything like that. So I um, picked it up, took a chance, and I'm very, very glad that I did. So now keeping on that prog theme, but going a little heavier, we got some Dream Theater, one of their Lost Not Forgotten archive series. This one here is the Distance Over Time demos recorded back in 2018. I've always been a fan of demos. I like to hear how songs start out. And I'll say that these didn't very much from the final thing, but what this does here is, and I haven't uh, gotten far into it, but at least uh, the first few tracks, give or take, no vocals on. And I'm expecting there aren't any vocals because usually that comes at the very end. James Labrie comes in, writes his lyrics, and probably just outright records and doesn't do demos or things. But here we really get to hear the music. And I'm finding that to be a very cool thing amongst all the Dream Theater demos and stuff that have come out because there's so much intricacy in the way that they write the music and perform it. Little leads and fills and things going on that when vocals come in, it sort of hides it. And I focus on the vocals and not really on the music at that aspect. And so this as an instrumental album is super good. And I love Distance Over Time. It is slowly becoming my favorite Dream Theater album over some of their other stuff. But there you go. Definitely recommend that if you're a Dream Theater fan to check that out. I uh, got a couple things in the mail. Uh, showed you as part of the new music now, a Southside Johnny 
slow dance album, uh, solo album, and I do believe it is the only one that he had done, definitely the first one that was a, a solo album. And it's more mellow. It's not quite what I was expecting, certainly not uh, full of the bombast that is the Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes and stuff like that. Doesn't mean it's not good, but it's definitely in late 80s. You know, there's a lot of correlation between Southside Johnny and Bruce Springsteen, but you've got his, um, you know, Bruce Springsteen made the, the Born in the USA, and then and later on he makes, I think it's called Tunnel of Love with Brilliant Disguise and stuff. And that album was a very adult contemporary rock kind of sound, and that's what this is here. And how much of it is uh, these guys are just doing it because that was what was of the era and or one looking at the other, I can never say. But it's a good album. Just definitely not as rocking as um, maybe I'd hoped it would be, but I do think it's gonna grow on me in time. And I also picked up uh, Missing Persons. Haven't dug into it just yet. Rhyme and Reason, which I think is their second studio album. Looking forward to diving into that, but that's got that new wave feel. And when you got the other hard rock and stuff that I've got, um, and I've mentioned it before, I don't really wanna peel the, uh, or do the opening process on it because there's so much fun in just pulling off that shrink wrap and opening it for the very first time. So, you know, probably in the next week or so, I'll be uh, in the mood for something a little more pop like that and I'll dive into it at that time. I think it doesn't usually hold out very long, more than a week or two, but anyways, that's why it's not opened yet. All right, and I, I definitely, as I said, picking up that Robbie Steinhardt, I had headed over to Sound Exchange, and so um, I was looking for some Nils Lofgren. Now, if you guys haven't already heard about this album, uh, the four guys of Crazy Horse, which includes Neil Young, so we've got um, Ralph Molina, Billy Talbot, Nils Lofgren, and Neil Young have partnered for a new album. Now, not under Neil Young and Crazy Horse, even though the band is Neil Young and Crazy Horse. It's coming out under those four names, and each of the members wrote three songs and uh, recorded them separately with their bands and have just contributed to, to the album. So it's kind of really like a various artist thing, but it is all the members of Neil Young and Crazy Horse. The first single that came off of it is a Nils Lofgren song, which I really, really have been enjoying. And what was interesting is I was streaming it and the track that played right after it, when Apple doesn't have something else because there was only the one song on the album, it'll suggest something. And it played a song from Grin, which is Nils Lofgren's first band. And so I went out and picked up some of that. And I picked up their fourth studio album, which is called Gone Crazy. Some, and it is some crazy artwork certainly in there. Um, haven't dug into it too much. I really like the opening song that's on here uh, called You're the Weight. Um, it's got him flipping over on here, which I know is a thing Nils Lofgren used to do in concert, do backflips and stuff. I guess that was his trademark because he even named an album Flip. Um, but I also picked up a Grin Best Of, which covers their four studio albums. Although for this one here, which was their fourth, uh, there's only that one song, You're the Weight, which is on here. I kind of wish there had been more of it. It's definitely more front uh, heavy uh, by the band. I, maybe that was their more successful stuff. But uh, picked that up. And incidentally, the song that I really liked, I think was called White Lines. Um, it's the first song off of One Plus One, the Grin album One Plus One. But I've got it on order and I'm waiting for it. So you're gonna see that next week uh, when that comes in. All right, and then I wrapped up my trip by making a trip out to Factory Records, which I like to do on Saturday nights. Uh, it's usually places not as packed and it's just kind of fun to do um, in the evening time. And so I went out and I really wasn't feeling this visit, unfortunately. You know, sometimes you're in the mood to do the hunt and sometimes you're not. I kind of forced it, but I did come away with some good records. Nothing outstanding, but all stuff that I need for my collection. So uh, The Rockets, No Ballads, it was the last album by this band that I didn't have yet and didn't want to track down the CD as of yet because I want it to be a standalone copy, not one of the two for type things. Um, but yeah, this one here, and uh, if you're not familiar with them, Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels, it's an offshoot of that, and that band eventually became Detroit and then The Rockets. We also have Jim McCarty on here from Cactus, so it's a pretty cool lineup of guys joining forces to make this, and I've been enjoying their music. 
I found this. I had been into uh, Roger Daltrey's solo stuff the last couple weeks, digging it and listening to it, liking his 80s production on, on stuff. And this is a best of album that featured two unreleased songs. The opening track, Martyrs and Mad Men, and track number four, Treachery, were unreleased when they came out on this. I don't know if they're available any other way, but when I find out that there are unreleased songs on a best of, I gotta go buy it and have it. So I found this, picked this up, and you can see this was what, $6.95, and this is $5.95. So that's why I've been picking up more vinyls. A lot of you guys have noted on that. Um, I've just finally found good record stores that have my kind of vinyl. Um, a lot of the stuff that was in New York, where I previously lived and was filming these videos, was a lot of sort of what I call hipster music, that indie rock stuff, and no slight to it in any way. I do like some of that stuff, but it's not uh, the rock and classic rock and stuff like that in the 80s glam and so forth. So not a lot for me to pick up when I would go to those, and I didn't buy a lot of records, very, very few. But um, now uh, finding that I can go out and get some new music for very inexpensive, less than 20 bucks, I got all three of these. This was also $5.95. Detective fe featuring Michael Desbarnes, uh, remember, he comes from the TV show The A-Team playing Murdoch. And I only just put that together recently. I knew him as a musician and actor, but never looked into what he did as a TV actor. So that was kind of a cool revelation recently that I put together. But uh, this one, um, I know, I think was one of his more popular things. And it's out on Wounded Bird on CD. And if I ever come across it, I'm going to pick it up. There's guys on the back just looking very, very cool. Um, I'm looking forward to checking it out. That's uh, Michael Des Barnes, Murdoch from A-Team right there. Um, don't know much about it, but um, I've always seen it around and I recently got into some of the other stuff that I really like from him and I wanted to add some detective to my collection. Now I've got three different things from him and we'll go from there. But that's the stuff I picked up this week. Ten cool items, uh, seven CDs, three records. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Maybe it sparked your interest. Go on and check out that, that Robin McCauley if you haven't already or the uh, Robbie Steinhardt. I, those are very good. I do recommend them. Okay, everyone, take care. Have a good one and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.